Okay, welcome to this lecture on pipe systems. Uh, we're gonna just talk about the three different kinds of pipe systems we typically encounter when we're trying to solve um, pipe flow problems. And then we'll also talk about pipe systems in series and in parallel. So let's go ahead and take a look at the screen here. Uh, this is kind of a gross looking picture. Um, what it is is some, it looks like galvanized iron pipe that, um, galvanized iron pipe was used in residential home construction for homes built, I think it was like in the 1950s or earlier. Uh, prior to that, it was lead pipes. Um, so galvanized iron pipe was a was a, an improvement over that. But um, it, it, over time, those galvanized iron pipes, um, they, they get some surface roughness on the interior surface. And then what ends up happening is waste from, you know, wastewater goes through these pipes and it starts to accumulate on the surface. And so you start getting some rust and you know buildup of gunk on the pipe surface. And so the effective cross-sectional area of your pipe suddenly becomes much smaller. And so this is the source of a lot of um, drain backups in older homes is this galvanized iron pipe just gets filled with crud and uh, it can become quite hardened. And so even using like a plumber snake, you know, basically a kind of a stiff wire that you put down into the pipe and try to auger out the blockages, Sometimes that doesn't even work in these older pipes because of the, the cross-sectional area is so small. So nowadays people use like PVC pipe or you know, basically plastic pipe, which has a much smoother surface finish so you don't get the buildup of gunk. And of course, they're not going to rust. Um, and in fact, I just went through this issue in my house not more than two weeks ago where I had pipe from 1955 that had this exact issue occurring in it and we had to have that whole set of piping replaced. And this is exactly what it looked like on the interior. Um, so anyway, if you have an older home, this is one of the joys of a home ownership that you'll eventually get to deal with if you have galvanized iron pipe. All right, um, so let's go ahead and move on here. I just wanna recap what we've been doing with pipe systems and how we use, how we analyze these things. So uh, none of this that I'm gonna go through at the beginning here should be new to you, but I just wanna recap it because repetition is a good thing for trying to remember stuff. So we have our extended Bernoulli equation, which is the key equation for analyzing pipe systems. The terms on the right, this is our, your pressure head. Let me zoom in a little more. This is our pressure head term, velocity head, elevation head. This is the total head coming into the um, pipe. Remember that when we apply the extended Bernoulli equation, it's along a streamline or basically at an inlet and an outlet. There's one inlet, one outlet. You can think about it as flow along a streamline or a stream tube. Um, so that's that's the way you can think about it. So this is the, the kind of like the energy coming in, just expressed in terms of head quantities. Here's the loss of energy due to head losses. These are basically viscous losses. So um, viscous losses in straight sections of pipe, which would be known as a major loss, or viscous losses in um, devices, which are known as minor losses. So you have some energy coming in. You lose some energy due to these losses. Maybe we add some energy because of a pump, or we extract some energy uh, due to a turbine. If it, we extracted energy, the HS term would be negative. That's called the shaft head term. And then this is the energy you get out. The V here, notice it's a V bar, so that's an, an average, uh, average velocity at the pipe inlet and pipe outlet. In order to make sure we have the correct amount of kinetic energy coming in or out, um, we need to put in a kinetic energy correction factor. That's what that alpha is. It's right here. That just, um, since we're using an average profile and the real profile is typically, you know, if it's a laminar flow in a circular pipe, it's gonna be a parabola shape. So make sure they have the same amount of kinetic energy we have to correct for that. Um, we have to put a correction in when we use the average here. So when it's a laminar velocity profile in the pipe, our kinetic energy correction factor comes out to be a value of two. And then if you uh, have a turbulent flow, you get closer and closer to a value of one and in very high Reynolds numbers, it's, it, you get even closer to a value of one. So for back of the envelope calculations, We'll just say if it's turbulent, we use a kinetic energy correction factor of one. And it's the reason it's one is because turbulent profiles tend to be more blunt shaped. There's a lot of mixing going on, so they look closer and closer to an average profile. So you don't have to do as much correction to get them 
do they have the same um, kinetic energy as the, the real profile? So when you have a Reynolds number less than 2300 based on the pipe diameter, it's laminar, use a, correct, a kinetic energy correction factor of two. When it's greater than that, we'll call it turbulent and use a kinetic energy correction factor of one. The shaft head term, HS here, it's related to the shaft power, that's the W dot, um, by just taking the shaft power, dividing through by the mass flow rate and gravity, gravitational acceleration. So that's how you get the shaft head term. And again, if you're putting energy into the flow, then this is positive, like a pump or a compressor. And if you're taking energy out, like a turbine, uh, then it's negative. The head loss term is the sum of all the losses that occur in the pipe. Um, so we'll add up all the losses. This means for all losses. We have a loss coefficient times the velocity head where that loss occurs. The loss coefficient, just as a reminder, is just defined as the pressure drop divided by the dynamic pressure. It's just to make it dimensionless based on the average flow velocity. So that's just how you would calculate a loss coefficient. Let's say you had a, a valve and you wanted to find what the loss coefficient was for that valve. You'd measure the pressure at the inlet of the valve and the outlet of the valve, measure the flow rate coming through so, and knowing the cross-sectional area of the pipe so you can get the average velocity. You, you find that pressure difference to make it dimensionless by the dynamic pressure based on the average speed, and then that's your loss coefficient. You can put it in a table and reuse that information later. The kinds of losses we have uh, include a major loss. Major losses are the viscous losses in long sections of pipe just due to the no-slip boundary condition at the pipe walls. Those major losses are found by taking a friction factor and multiplying it by the pipe length divided by the pipe diameter. And if it's a non-circular pipe, you would use a hydraulic diameter there. So that's how you deal with major losses. I'll come back to the friction. Well, actually, let me talk about the friction factor right now. If it's a laminar flow, if the Reynolds number is less than 2300, the friction factor is 64 over the Reynolds number. If it's a turbulent uh, flow, if the Reynolds number is greater than 2300, then the friction factor is going to be a function of the Reynolds number and the relative roughness of the pipe. The, to find what that friction factor is, we can use the Moody plot or the Holland or Colbrook formulas. Moody plot is down here. You've seen this before, so I won't review it um, very much. Here's your friction factor, your Reynolds number, relative roughness. To get the roughness epsilon, we can refer to a table that will give the roughness for various materials, either in English or metric units. These are all ballpark kinds of calculations, so there's not a lot of precision to these um, numbers. Uh, the Colebrook formula is here. That's an implicit formula, so you have to iterate to a solution to get the friction factor. The Holland formula is less accurate, but it's explicit. So you can just plug in the Reynolds number and relative roughness on this side and then calculate what the friction factor is there. So th this is a way to do it in a formula. This is how you do it graphically. Definitely know how to do it graphically using the Moody plot because that's how you would need to do it, for example, in an exam. So that's how you find the friction factor for a turbulent flow. So that's our major loss coefficient here. It's friction factor times L over D. If you're dealing with minor losses, so these are the viscous losses in devices like a, a pipe elbow, a T, a valve, a contraction, expansion, things like that, then we find those loss coefficients from tables. They're often just kind of measured and put into a table so you can look it up later. And here's an example of such a table. So a table of minor loss coefficients. Here's the K value. And so, again, you can look these up. There are different tables that are out there, different pieces of software that can uh, have, the, have this information for you. But the way, that, the way that these K values are found is, again, as I described just a moment ago, is you measure the pressure drop across the device, make it dimensionless by the dynamic pressure, and then you calculate your K and you put it in a table. Okay. So this is how we use our extended Bernoulli equation, right? how we find all these parts. All right, so let me go now to talk about the different kinds of pipe systems we come across. They're, they're classified as type one, type two, and type three. Type one pipe systems are ones where we're given what the flow rate is, 
and we have to determine what the pressure drop is. Okay, so you know what kind of flow rate you want in your pipe system, and you're trying to figure out what the pressure difference is between the inlet and outlet. Those are the easiest kinds of pipe systems to solve. They're very straightforward to solve. The reason for that is because uh, you know your pipe diameter, you know your flow rate, so you can easily calculate the, the Reynolds number, you can easily calculate the relative roughness, you can find your friction factor, no problem, and then use the extended Bernoulli equation. It's very straightforward. Type two pipe systems are where you're given the pressure drop and you're trying to find the flow rate. Now these kinds of problems typically require iteration to solve. These are much harder to solve. And the reason for this is if you're not given the flow rate, then you don't know what the Reynolds number is. Okay. Now you know the diameter in these kinds of problems, so you know the relative roughness, but you can't find the Reynolds number because you don't know the velocity, so you can't find the friction factor. And so you have to start guessing um, and doing some iteration and, and then solve the problem in that manner. And, I, and it'll be clear, I'll, I'll do some examples in a different uh, set of videos where you'll see me go through this iterative process. But basically the, the approach is you make a an educated guess at what the flow rate is. So uh, from that you get the velocity and then you calculate the Reynolds number, then you calculate the friction factor, you solve your extended Bernoulli equation, and from that you can um, rearrange your extended Bernoulli equation to solve for the velocity. Okay, So you calculate your friction factor based on an assumed velocity and then see if the extended Bernoulli equation gives you back that same velocity. If it doesn't, then you guessed wrong. And what you should do is take the velocity out of your extended Bernoulli equation and use that as your next guess for your velocity. Calculate a new Reynolds number, a new friction factor, go back to your extended Bernoulli equation, see if that new velocity matches your, your, your updated guess. If it matches, great, everything's consistent. If not, you have to iterate again. Okay, so it's an iterative procedure, and these are harder to do than, than the type 1 pipe systems. And then the hardest ones of all are the type 3 pipe systems. They're very much like type 2, but they're a little bit tougher. Here, the desired flow rate and the pressure drop are specified, but what you're missing is the pipe diameter. And again, if you're missing the pipe diameter, you can't calculate the, the Reynolds number, and you can't calculate the relative roughness. So now you're missing two things there, so again, you can't calculate the friction factor. So here again, you have to rely on some iteration. Um, you're going to have to guess, make a reasonable guess for what the pipe diameter is. From that, you can calculate your Reynolds number and relative roughness and then get your friction factor. Go back to your um, extended Bernoulli equation and um, you, you can do an iterative approach through that. Uh, you know, it's just kind of like what we did for type two. And again, I'll go through an example and you can see how it works. But, you have to make a guess at the diameter and then go through the extended Bernoulli equation and then do an iterative procedure from that. So type one is the, the, the easiest one because you're just trying to find the required pressure drop. Type two requires iteration because you have to iterate to find the flow rate and type three is also iterative because you have to find the pipe diameter. It's best to see how these things are done in examples, which I'll do in separate videos. Now the other thing that um, related to pipe systems are dealing with serial pipe systems or pipes in series um, and parallel pipe systems. I think I, I've got these actually in, in uh, opposite, I don't have those written correctly, but anyway. Let me just focus on the, the pictures. So let's say in this case we have these, these three pipes um, and they're all going between the tanks. The way that you would analyze this is pretty straightforward is you just choose your point one here and your point two here and you can go through streamlines in each pipe separately. It's no problem. You just do the extended Bernoulli equation. Let's just call this point one prime and then here's point one double prime. That should be a double prime. Try this again. So you would just go through the three pipes using your extended Bernoulli equation just three different times. So you just have three different extended Bernoulli equations. They all have the same state one 
and state two. They're all they all look exactly the same because the they're all on the same free surface here and same free surface there. So that that that's pretty straightforward. And depending on the characteristics of the three different pipes, you may have different flow rates through them. So for example, if they have different diameters or different uh, roughnesses, um, different types of minor losses or major losses, they would all have different. Um, they would all just have different flow rates. But the driving potential, the elevation difference in this case, is exactly the same for the three different pipes. Okay. We can certainly analyze those kinds of pipe systems without any real difficulty from what you've learned in this course. Now the other kind of pipe system is shown down here. Here you actually have branching pipes. These get much more challenging to solve because now what ends up happening is you, you actually get a system of equations that are nonlinear. So in this particular case, what would happen is you'd have your point one here and um, you would go down to this node. A node is where you have uh, the pipes branching. And, um, and then you could, let me put point two there, and then you could go from point two to point three here and then point two to point four there. All right, so now we have three extended Bernoulli equations going from one to two, two to three, and two to four. So you'd write those down. And then in addition to that, you would have a conservation of mass statement right here at node two. Because you know the mass flow rate coming in and the mass flow rates going out all have to match, right? I mean, you, you have to conserve mass at that node, right? Whatever mass flow rate comes in has to be the same mass flow rate going out. Now to figure out how much mass flow rate goes through two to three versus two to four, you have, you have to solve for that, okay? So you have your three, um, you have your three extended Bernoulli equations, and then you'd have a conservation of mass equation, and you'd have to solve all these things simultaneously. And the problem with doing this is you have, you know, the, the friction factor depends on a velocity. You have velocity squared terms. It, it just becomes kind of challenging to do this by hand. Um, a lot of times it's just done numerically. But you can certainly do it. The concept of setting up the equations is not hard. Again, just extended Bernoulli equation a few times and conservation of mass at each of these nodes. And if you had a complex pipe system, you'd have to do this at every node, you know, connections to the nodes and so on and so forth. So you can get a lot of equations that you have to solve simultaneously. It's just easiest to do that numerically. Now, we're not going to solve these kind of parallel pipe systems. That's really outside the scope of what, what we do. At the very best, what I might ask you to do is just set up the system of equations for this, but don't actually solve them. Okay, so you should at least understand the concept. All right, so that covers everything I wanted to say about this. Just take a look at the example so you can see the type 2 and type 3 pipe systems and how we iterate through those.